Good morning. Morning. Good morning to each and every one. Welcome to Wayman Chapel AME Church School. Reverend Alan D. Edwards is our pastor. I'm Sister Judy Jones, Sunday School Superintendent. We pray and hope that you will enjoy what we have in store for you today. If we're ready to begin, let us begin with our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the church universal, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do bow humbly before thee this morning to say thank you, Lord, just to give you praise and to worship you and to love on you, dear God. Father God, we do establish that you are the God above all gods. Father God, you're so many that we can't even begin to wag the names that you are, Father God. And for this, we say thank you. Thank you for being a merciful God and a graceful God. Father God, be with us always and walk with us and guide us. Always allow our hearts to be open to receive you and what you have to give to us. Bless the sick, the shut in, and those who are afflicted, Father. Bless those, Father, who don't know you in the pardon of their own sins. Father, because you stand there waiting for them just to say, here I am. Father God, we need thee. Bless us all and keep us. Father, bless the one who's going to bring the messages today. Lower him down into your bosom and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell deep down from within. Now, Father, bless us all and keep us. Thank you as we go into a, a coming week. Guide us and be with us. And let us be mindful of the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, we're so excited to have you join us this morning. We're starting a new quarter where this quarter basically is about celebrations. Our lesson one for September the 5th, 2021, celebrating with song. The lesson scripture comes from Exodus 14, one through 15, and excuse me, chapter 15, verses 20, verse 21. The focus scripture, Exodus 15, 11 through 21. Our key verse, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness? Awesome in splendor, doing wonders. Exodus 15 and 11, commencing. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretches out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear it and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestine. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as stone till thy people pass over. O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in. 
in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children, excuse me, of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out of after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Thank you for the reading of the word. Reverend. Bless you, it's in your hands. Good morning, good morning. Praise good morning, Lord, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Jones, uh, for reading and lesson, opening it up this morning with this first lesson of this new quarter. Man, it uh, <clears throat> deals with praising uh, God and celebrating the goodness of God for all the things that he has done and for us that he is still doing. Uh, and we look at uh, no better place to start than uh, uh, the Israelites whom God had chosen as his, as his chosen people in order to uh, use them or uh, let them be an example of the goodness of God to all those who uh, did not know God. And so uh, what, he did, <clears throat> what he did was he, he worked... Uh, through Moses as he sent Moses to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And after uh, Pharaoh, uh, Moses did what God was telling him, directed, directing him to do in reference to uh, uh, telling him what does say the Lord. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Pharaoh decided to let the children of Israel go. <clears throat> and as they uh, left Egypt, uh, man, they were headed um, uh, around a a roundabout way to get to where God wanted them to be. And that is to what the promised land, the land that he had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so what he did was he led them that way, even though it was not the shortest way uh, to get to uh, Canaan or the promised land, but yet and still God knew that uh, the children of Israel had been in slavery for all those years. And that if they would have went, would have gone the shortest route that they may have encountered some enemy and they may have been in some battles uh, and God knew that they would not be ready, that many of them uh, may have um, decided to go back into Egypt uh, because they had left Egypt. And even though they were slaves, but you understand what, uh, he was afraid that if they encountered a battle uh, with the enemies along the way that many of them would have probably turned back and went back in. So he led them away where it would not have uh, the enemy forces um, uh, attacking them as they went. But yet and still Pharaoh uh, and his army decided to uh, follow them. And we, we see that prior to this um, uh, 15th chapter uh, verses uh, 11 through 21 and the beginning of chapter 15, we find and that this is where uh, where God was uh, leading Israel through the wilderness and Egypt was behind them. And so they came to the Red Sea. And as they came to the Red Sea, we find that uh, this is where uh, God spoke to Moses and he said that the enemy that you see behind you, you will never see them again. And I'm sure that when God told Moses that Moses was trying to figure out now how is that going to be when they see the sea before them, they see the Egyptian behind them, they couldn't go to the left or the right because of the mountainous areas and things of that nature. And so, um, but yet and still God, what uh, is true to his word, he said, you'll never see him again. Now, God had it already knew, know what he was going to do in order to take care of the Egyptians. And so as he told Moses and directed Moses to stretch out his rod <clears throat> toward the sea, and as he stretched it out, we know the story, it went and um, the sea divided and uh, the Israelites were able to cross uh, the Red Sea on dry land and the Egyptians followed them. Amen. it was God's plan, a strategy to get uh, the Egyptians destroyed. And so as the Egyptians followed 
uh, Israel as they crossed on dry land, the Red Sea, that now that what the Egyptians are headed through the Red Sea and God told Moses once all the Israelites had crossed to stretch out your rod again to the sea. And as he stretched it out, what happened? The waters closed in and it drowned all of the uh, Egyptians, Pharaoh included. And so now we pick it up on as we look in this um, uh, 11 through the uh, 21st verse, of Exodus, we find now that there is a song, there is a need, uh, a reason for the Israelites to celebrate because they were in a predicament that they couldn't do anything about. But because God moved in a mighty way, and that's what uh, God's word tells us, say, all we have to do is to stand still and to see the salvation of the Lord. And so as they had crossed and they now see the Egyptian being drowned in the Red Sea. Uh, it brings us to this point in scripture, uh, Exodus 15, where we find that what now, uh, because of the greatness of God, because of what God uh, did for them, uh, that no other man could have done, that what, that now it causes for a celebration. How many of us celebrates the goodness of the Lord when we acknowledge and recognize the things that God is doing in our lives. Amen. Many people may think that it's not necessary to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Many people may be shy or ashamed to celebrate what the Lord is doing, uh, is doing or has done for you, has brought you through something that nobody else uh, uh, had ideas of how it was going to work out. But yet and still, you see where God brought you from and where he have you now that we know that only God could have done. How can we give him thanks? Well, the uh, most appropriate way is to celebrate the goodness of the Lord, amen. And here we find that after uh, uh, Moses had led the children of Israel to safety, the Egyptians were now destroyed, that now we find that they are, what, celebrating the goodness of, of God through what? Through a song, amen. So that's why when we, when we sing the songs of Zion, uh, we uh, have to pay more attention to what the song says or what the words of the song are saying instead of just listening at the beat of the music. Amen. Many people get, get uh, hung up on the beat of the music and they miss what the song is saying. Amen. But every song that we sing for the Lord, and we find that even in the older songs, uh, now, time, now time, many times, uh, uh, doing these days now, you, you, uh, you know, I don't know, I have a problem sometimes trying to figure out what they're saying, uh, what the, what the meaning of the song is, because they say it over so many times, and, and then again, many times you don't hear because of the, 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 the sounds that they be making and things, but again, if we listen to the words of the song, and not the beat of the music, we'll be able to understand what God is saying to us through what, through song. And so here the Israelites began to what, celebrate God for what God has done uh, for them by bringing them to freedom from the captivity of the Egyptians and destroying the enemy as they followed behind uh, God's people. And so, uh, in our book, we look at, uh, in the introduction, it talks about everybody have a favorite song uh, or hymn. Amen. What's your favorite song? Or what's your favorite hymn? Uh, amen. Mine is, the Lord is blessing me right now. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is blessing me right now. Amen. So we all should have a favorite song that when uh, trouble comes that we're able to sing uh, that song or when we are feeling down for the circumstances we're going through and uh, we know God going to bring us through. But during that downtime or that sad times or the storms in our lives, there should be a song that we should be able to sing. There should be a scripture that we should be able to quote and to have uh, in our hearts that uh, will help us to make it through the uh, struggles of life, amen. And so um, a favorite song, the favorite song, like I said, everybody should have one, a favorite song, a favorite scripture. And these favorite songs or scriptures that we have, they come from personal experiences. Here we find that the Israelites were able to sing Moses' song because why? Because of the 
personal experience that they had uh, as Moses led them following the guidance that God was giving him. He led them, what, uh, to freedom from the captivity of the Egyptian and from the uh, Egyptians uh, following after them to destroy them. So that is a reason uh, that they had to celebrate and they celebrated by what? By putting together the words of a song. And we find that mostly songs are uh, written by what? Are written from experiences that people have. And we find that they put these words into uh, music and they began to what uh, to sing about these songs based upon what they had had experienced. Amen. The song of Moses is the first song recorded in the scripture. Amen. Uh, we know David is credited with writing a whole lot of the Psalms, which uh, uh, majority, majority of the Psalms, or all of the Psalms basically are uh, songs that what that uh, the people were writing as they traveled following the guidance of God. And so, but here we find that uh, Moses song that he sung as they celebrate God delivering them from the Egyptian captivity was the first song that was, re that was ex uh, recorded in the scripture. Man, uh, the song resulted from Moses' uh, remembrance of Israel's experiences with God. Amen. And you know that um, uh, Israel had a lot of experiences uh, that, what, that God had allowed them to go through where God showed him them how good God is and how great God is. You and I have some great experiences for however long God has allowed us to live and we got to the, um, got to the age of acknowledging how God works and what God is, has done and is doing for us, we have and we can remember a lot of uh, experiences uh, of God working with us, uh, God providing for us, God protecting us, amen. Many of us can look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be uh, today, amen. And so when we think about this song, who was it that really were, were singing this song or were, uh, came up with the words and were making this song? We think about Miriam. Miriam was Moses's and Aaron's sister, uh, also worshiped in song. Amen. This quarter's uh, lesson that we're dealing with for this uh, uh, next three months uh, deals with what? Uh, deals with worship. Amen. God is worthy of our praise and he is worthy to be worshiped, amen. Uh, giving God thanks and acknowledging him for who he is, what he has done and what he is doing for us right now. So therefore, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine that a person uh, refuses or neglects to worship God, amen. It all stems from once we acknowledge, amen. God blesses each and every one of us. I don't care whether sinner or saint, God blesses each and every one of us, but the ones that's going to take the time and give time to worship and praise God are the ones that acknowledge what the Lord has done, realizing that we can't do anything without God. When in God or with God, we have our movements, we have our life, our breath. So it all starts with God. And once we come to the point in our lives that we acknowledge that God is our source of strength, our source of life, our source of health, our provisions, our protections, our security. Once we acknowledge that, then that those are the experiences that we have, um, have accepted and acknowledge that God is the one that is keeping us, providing for us, protecting us. And so therefore what it brings from the inside uh, of our acknowledgement of who God is and what God is doing and experiences God has allowed us to go through to see him working in our lives and the love he has for us, it what it brings about a, 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 a time of worship and a time of praise. Nobody, man, nobody should have to uh, beg somebody to worship and praise God. Nobody should have to have to try to entice somebody to give God thanks or to worship and praise God because once we acknowledge who God is, man, the thought comes that uh, nobody can do me like Jesus can. And so therefore what? 
Therefore, we don't have to wait for somebody else to praise God. We should praise God for uh, what we acknowledge him uh, for doing. Amen. And for the experiences that we know God brought us to. Amen. And so therefore, what we can praise God all by ourselves. We can worship him. Amen. All by ourselves. Amen. And so there's uh, many forms of worship. Amen. Many forms of worship. But what singing is one of the forms of worship. Amen. Uh, the singer hymn says, you, you may not can sing like an angel. You may not can preach like Paul, but you can still tell the love of Jesus that Jesus died for us all. Amen. And so it's not about singing to try to play, pre, please the people. Uh, but it's about singing to the glory of God and to singing from the experiences that we have of what God has done. So um, if you wonder, how can I worship God? Hey, man, just try to sing. You know, many times we find and uh, hear people, uh, and many of us may have done it ourselves. We sing, um, sing uh, days in and days out sometimes, you know, different songs as we're going and as we're coming. So why not think about just uh, singing about the goodness of the Lord? Amen. That's why I say we each one of us should have a favorite song, uh, a favorite uh, scripture that we have. So that what in those times that we uh, we are aware of how good God has been, then what we can sing that favorite song. We can uh, quote that favorite scripture, and we can witness to others about what about what the Lord has done for us. Uh, in the in this story that we read as Exodus chapter 15 verses 11 through uh, 21, we find that uh, uh, there are actually uh, five stanzas uh, of verses in the song of Moses. And that is um, uh, between verses uh, chapter 15 verses one through uh, 18. And in that, uh, the first stanza which is verses um, one through five. Those first five verses of the of the uh, of the fifteenth chapter are what are parts of the song that Moses and and Miriam all put together to what to sing and to and to celebrate what the Lord has done. It focuses on those first five verses of that fifteenth chapter. Focuses on God as a warrior, Amen. Which means that what God is a protector of his people. And so uh, when you read at your leisure, these first, this whole 15th chapter of Exodus, you'll see how this song came about and what they were singing about uh, in the different parts of this song. Uh, the second stanza, which is verses six to 10, uh, was focusing on God, the triumphant warrior. See how, see how they put this together. First of all, they acknowledge that God was a, a warrior because why he was leading them against the enemy and now that they what they have uh, uh, acknowledged that he was leading them and he was their source of uh, strength uh, to enable them to what uh, to stand up against the enemy who were the Egyptians now in that um, second stanza verses six to ten it talks about how God was is a, what is a triumphant warrior which means God is victorious amen they saw how he was leading them against the enemy and they now see that what he has he has won the battle amen so what they put that in the words they put that in the song saying that what god is a triumphant uh a god amen uh and when we look at today's lesson it focuses on the third the fourth and the fifth there are five stanzas the third fourth and fifth stanza uh verses 11 through 21 which is our subject for today uh our text for today it what it highlights god's uh uh, powers that there are no powers greater than God, amen. And so, look what they, they say the first part of the song say, What it talks about God and what He was doing as a warrior, leading them against the what enemy, fighting their battles for them. And then they talked about what after they saw how He had uh, won the victory over Pharaoh and his army, they now what adds to the song of him as a warrior. Now they say he's a victorious, he's a victorious uh, warrior, a triumphant warrior, which means what? He had won the battle, amen? And just, just a side note here, God has never lost the battle 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. So if you if you if you're one of them that loves a winner, why not get on God's side? Why not join God's team and his family? Because God has never lost a battle yet. And from record indicates that from who he is and what he is capable and able of doing, I got some good information that you don't have to worry about. He's never going to lose a battle. Amen. And so it says that what? It says it talks about in the last three stanzas of the song that what? That uh, God has powers that can't, cannot be compared with any other person or any other powers that there is. Amen. You remember the scripture tells us that God has ordained all uh, whatever power there is in uh, effect. God has what ordained it, which means God allowed. But yet and still what? There is no power that God has allowed that is greater than God's power himself. Amen. He can start things. He can allow things to happen. He can prevent things from happening. Whenever God sees that they are not in accordance with his word. And we will. Amen. Uh, so uh, the powers that uh, they saw and the things that they witnessed God doing in the victory over the Egyptian, it what? It showed that what? That uh, God is what? Is motivated uh, by his love and his compassion for God's people. Amen. Which means what? God loves us, all those who, what, who are living and have committed their lives to him. What God loves us and God will what? Will do whatever he know we stand in need of. Amen. Why? Because of his love and his compassion for what? For his people. Amen. And we, we are witness to that by John 3, 16, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that what that is a confirmation of the love that God has for what? For his people, that he will allow his son to sacrifice, to die in, our, in, in, in man's uh, place because of the sinfulness of man, to allow his um, righteous son to die for our sins and to enable whosoever acknowledges him as Lord and Savior, the Son of God, what uh, will be able to enter and be acceptable uh, to God to enter into his kingdom. Amen. God has just saved the Israelites by parting the Red Sea and letting them walk through on dry land. Only God can do that. God allowed Moses and the Israelites to witness their enemies' destruction. And so what? So they have seen the powers of God. They have witnessed uh, the actions of God. And now, therefore, what? Therefore, they come to the conclusion that we need to celebrate the goodness of God. And what they do, they put what they saw and they what they just uh, sang about it. Amen. They sang about what God has done, the goodness of God, how he was a what? How he was a warrior, how he was a uh winner and how he what how he again cared for uh his people and what and about the powers that god has is not compared cannot be compared uh with any lesser power <clears throat> amen uh so when we look at uh verse 11 through 13 it talks about again how that they saw god's power that what that pharaoh and the egyptians or any uh, uh human being uh, that's in a position of authority how they could that they could not compare with the powers that god has amen although egypt had many gods and you know they had many of the those uh gods that they worship many of them worship the stars or the uh, many of them worship uh nature many of them built uh statues that they worship many of them worship people and so, but yet and still what the, the Israelites, after they saw the power that God had, realized that what? That none of these other gods that the Egyptians or any other, other nations around them were serving, what could be greater than the God uh, that they served, the God of Israel, amen. And so um, Moses includes many blessings in his song, amen. And that's what, again, that's come from the experiences 
how do you uh, know you're blessed? Well, you know you're blessed when what? When you see uh, and experience the things that God has and is doing for you, amen? So uh, he included many blessings that he had witnessed what God doing for him and his and God's people, amen? Including God's most recent victory for Israel to emphasize the differences between uh, the true and living God uh, almighty God and what and other gods amen and so therefore what therefore uh he included uh again the blessings that he knew God was placing upon him and the Israelites amen that's a that's a note for us that what that we can sing our song amen about the goodness of God celebrating God and what through song of what he has done including what the blessings that he uh, he has done for us. That's why I love the song said, the Lord will make a way somehow. Why do, why do you think uh, that person that, uh, again, put those words together, he was what? He or she was thinking about what? Thinking about what the Lord had already brought them through, knowing that what? That the way has been made not by him or her, not by any human being, but what? God made the way. And so the Lord will make a way somehow. We don't know how, just like Israel and Moses didn't know how they were gonna, gonna get past the Red Sea and the Egyptians behind them. They didn't know how the way was gonna be made, but what? But God had told Moses that uh, the Egyptians that you see today, you will not see them again, amen. But what, but God worked it out, he made a way, amen. Some of you are going through some situations today that you just don't know how you are gonna make it, amen. With this pandemic, we don't know what's gonna happen from one minute to the next, but yet and still what, our trust because of the experience that God has already brought us to that let us know that if God is for us, he is more than the whole world against us. If, if God got his arms around us, amen, that, that what, that we are protected and God will not allow anything to happen to us, amen, uh, that he don't want to come our way. And so uh, this is what uh, Moses and, and Mary and them what, put in this song about what, about the goodness of God and about what the blessings that what that God had placed upon them had showered upon them that they knew it was only God that made that uh, victory, made that uh, possible. Amen. And so Israel needs to celebrate. Why? Because of what God has done for them. We today need to celebrate. We just had a hurricane that has come through many states and and uh, continue to travel all the way up to where they no doubt no had no thought that Ida would make it from the Gulf Coast all the way up to the East Coast, a Northeast Coast and do all that havoc and damage that it did, amen. But what, but we that are still alive, we go through some situations, some trials and some tribulation and what, we have reason to celebrate that we still breathe and we still are alive today, amen. And so what, what do you do? Uh, to celebrate. Well, we give praises to God. We worship God. We sing to God. Amen. From our experiences that lets us know and let others know that God has been good to us. Amen. All right. Uh, Moses also invites the whole nation of Israel to praise God. Not only is Moses, uh, did Moses recognize the goodness of God and willing to what uh, celebrate what the Lord God had done for them, what he also invites others, amen. What that means, that means that we, once we acknowledge what God is doing for us, what God has brought us to, and then what we are to encourage other people to what, to worship and praise God, amen. And to what, just open their eyes or to see uh, how good God has been to them, amen. And that we let our light shine and we talk about the experiences that God brought us through, the ways that God made for us when there seemed to be no way, then what? Then we are encouraging other people to come and to celebrate the goodness of God through what? Through worship, through praise, and through what? Through singing. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, when we look at uh, verses 14 to 18, 
it talks about how Moses and what uh, began to celebrate by what? By uh, more blessings and the deliverance uh, awaits God's people. So not only was he singing about God as a, as a, as a, a warrior, but he's celebrating now what? About God as being a victorious or uh, triumphant warrior as what? And now he says what? If God has blessed them uh, through their uh, situation, of leaving Egypt, being followed uh, by Pharaoh and his army to destroy them, and what? And uh, not knowing how they're going to escape Pharaoh coming behind them and the Red Sea in front of them, that what? That now they talk about what? If God did that for them, made a way through the Red Sea, that they were able to cross on dry land, and they what? And he destroyed the Egyptians as he closed the waters back. He said, what? If God did that for them, then there are great uh, and many blessings that is yet to come. And also deliverances uh, for God's people because of what now they know that when they going through things, when uh, they don't see no way out that God will deliver and God will continue to bless them. And how do we acknowledge uh, again who God is? Because why, as we read these scriptures today as to how God did it for the Israelites, God's chosen people, then what? God never changes. So the same thing he did, the same ways he made for the Israelites to what? To be free and to escape the enemy. He fought their battles for them. It's the same God that is what? Today, and he'll do the same thing for us who have acknowledged him as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Um, what did he do for us? He'll do the same thing for somebody else. Amen. That's why we are encouraged to be a witness of the goodness of God as we go so that other people will know that what? That we have our trust in God because of what he has done for us and because of who we acknowledge him to be. Amen. But you got to be sure of your faith in God. Amen. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen, which means that what? Which means that uh, faith uh, don't really kick in until you can't see you can't see no way out, amen? Uh, if you can see your way out, if you can figure out what you're gonna do to better your situation, then what? Why have faith, amen? Uh, faith is the things of the things, what? Unseen, which means we don't see how, but what? But we have the faith to believe that what? God will come through for us. And how you gonna do it? We don't know how you gonna do it, but we believe because of the faith and trust we have in him that he gonna do something and our situation is gonna be made better. Amen. All right, then. Uh, once we, once we uh, again celebrate the goodness of God, the victories that God has brought us through, the provisions that God has made for us, once we celebrate uh, through singing, through praising, and to worship in God, we find that what the enemies, amen, would hear the news of God's powerful protection of God's people and the enemy will what? Will be afraid because of what? Because they know God is not gonna let uh, the enemy have the victory over his people. Hmm? So you see, see why it's important to praise about what God is doing for you and how God is uh, working in your life and how you put your trust in God, because it it, it also gives warning to the enemy, those that might want to do something to you, those that might want to destroy you or attack you, uh, uh, harm you, then what? Then because of your witnessing for God, amen, and the power that God has, has shown to what he has brought you through and what he's done for you, it will give the enemy to have what? A, a second thought about coming against you because they know what it's not just about you if they attack you then what then they gonna have to fight against god hmm? amen but what but if you shaky in your relationship with god then that means that what well the enemy is not scared of you because they know you're not too sure whether god gonna do anything for you or not hmm? amen uh don't the scripture tell us say the lord said do my prophets no harm <laughs> huh amen why because uh if, they, if the enemy comes against God's chosen people or uh, 
somebody that is faithful to God, that is testifying about the goodness of God and their stand for God, then what? Then they know that they are gonna have to fight God too. And it's a terrible thing fall into the hands of uh of a living god amen all right and so uh god's powerful protection of god's people and fear the lord as well as god's people because why the people amen by them singing miriam and moses and this moses song that they were singing it what it gave the enemies uh what uh gave the enemies warning that what that they are trusting and depending on God, and God is what? All powerful. There's no power that can be compared with God's power, or nobody can defeat God. So, therefore, what? It causes the enemy to have second thoughts about what? About coming against God's people. Amen. Uh, the ultimate promise uh, of victory to Israel is in verse 17. Amen. Look what it says in verse 17. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. 18 verse says, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Um, so what? So therefore, what? Uh, God promises uh, to what? to bring uh, to their inheritance is uh, fulfilled. Is to what? Is to give God, uh, give God's people, uh, he promises to what? Give them the inheritance that comes along with being a part of God's family. Huh? Amen. Israel is high on praises and gratitude and they gladly proclaim God's sovereignty and his rightful rule over their lives. Uh, how? Why? Because that is total trust that they now have what acknowledge in God. And so because of their faithfulness, because of their not being ashamed to proclaim their trust and their dependence upon God, then what God says that what his promise to give them the inheritance that he promised to uh, their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that what? That it's gonna be fulfilled. He gonna bring them to where he promised, amen, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He gonna bring his people there because God is true to his word. Hmm? Amen. All right, um, in, the, in the book on page seven, it talks about a case study. And in this case study, it talks about, um, Again, you know, on the inauguration day when uh, this little black uh, female got up and she is a poet and she uh, re re recited a poem that she had written just for the uh, inauguration. And when you think about what she wrote, it, 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 what? it involves the struggles that what? That people had been through for the last four years under Trump. And now the poem that she um, she wrote uh, indicated what that now the struggle is over uh, and now there's a better day and what and that with the uh, election uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris that now what now there is a light at the end of the tunnel that things what uh, should be getting better or it seems to be on the way to getting better because why somebody was praying for God to move on these United States of America and to bring about a difference, what? And to um, allow God to move that what? Things will get better. And this leader that was now in place with Trump is what? Is, is going to be, is removed. And now what? Now we find that there is a hope on the horizon of what? A better days ahead. And so it said that what? Amanda Gorman, achieved status as the youngest inaugural report in U.S. history on January 20th uh, this year. Amen. On the inauguration, uh, Ms. Garman recited her poem, The Here We Climb. I would have, uh, see, that's what, that she talking about what? Some experiences that she had about what? How she had to go through some struggles. The heel means what? That, that there's a, uh, requires extra strength. 
extra desire, extra determination in order to what? In order to climb a hill. Have you ever have you ever uh, climbed a hill, uh, going up and uh, going up an incline where you have to lean forward or you have to put forth more energy in order to what? In order to get up the hill. And so she is writing from what? From experiences about where she was or where she is and now saying that what i got to go up i got to climb up uh, above these terrible situations of climb up above all this racism all this and in, these injustices all this hatred and things that are what that are in the world today what we're climbing up a hill which means we're trying to rise above those situations amen she wrote the poem to commemorate the inauguration uh, Biden and Harris, uh, and what? And we find she, she because of the word she used to show that what? She believed in her heart that things were gonna get better. Why? Because she was climbing up the hill. The struggle was there. She still what? Had a desire to make it up the hill, amen. And the scripture tells us, we should not get weary in well-doing. She captured the hearts and as she spoke to the call for national unity uh, amid divisiveness and other challenges. Amen. So see what she was doing. She was what, talking about the, the things that she witnessed and what the things that she experienced and now saying that what, that she was, um, again, she was calling for what, for things to get better. Uh, amen. And what, and the other challenges that for that were uh, present during that time that what, that, um, that a change would come. Uh, in an interview with her, uh, she gave the explanation about in my poem, she says, as I as she quoted, I'm not going to in any way gloss over what we have seen over the past few weeks. Amen, talking about what? Talking about the things that she experienced uh, that she saw nationally on TV that Trump was doing and how he was what? He was now uh, really not showing that he was, um, was qualified uh, to be what? To be president of these United States, amen? Uh, and I dare say the past few years, talking about what? The years that Trump was in office, she said what? She says, I was not um, going to in any way gloss over what we've seen over the past few weeks and there I say the past few years, but what I really aspire to do in the poem, why she wrote the poem is to what? Is to be able to use my words to envision a way in which our country can still come together and heal. Hmm? Amen. And how did she do it? Because of her faith in God, believe that what? That God will move in a way where situations in America, uh, there'll be a more concern about people now instead of the injustices and all of the racism things that were occurring that now she believed that what? She envisioned, which means she is expecting and she is looking forward to what? To things getting uh, better. It's doing that in a way that is not erasing or neglecting the harsh tr truth. I think Americans need uh, to reconcile, uh, reconcile with. And so her purpose for writing was to enable her to what? Uh, to uh, touch the hearts and minds of people that what? That things are gonna get better. Um, and she was trusting that God will what? Will move in a way that will bring peace to the hearts and minds of men, women, boys, and girls everywhere. In the life application, it said the Israelites were the original audience for Moses' song. Why? Because he was leading, he had been chosen to lead God's people from Egypt to the promised land and what? And so as he experienced God working through him uh, to bring about the changes and finally to destroy the Egyptians, uh, we find that what? We find that these are the uh, people that Moses was talking to about what? About the goodness of God. And they began to what? Celebrate. Once they saw the victory, once they saw how God had moved on their behalf, it brought about what? A cause for celebrating, uh, amen, the goodness of God. So they sang uh, the Moses song. We talked about him as a, as a warrior. 
talked about him as a triumphant warrior and talked about him as what? As all powerful and there's no other power greater than the power of, uh, of God. Yes, amen. Uh, yet we know that adoption by God's position, uh, God, by God positions us to also be God's children. Amen. We have to acknowledge him as God, as father. We have to acknowledge and recognize his son as Lord and Savior, his Holy Spirit as our comforter and our guide. And then we'll be what? Become a part of God's family. Amen. And the same thing he did for Israel uh, in defense against their, uh, their enemy, the Egyptians, is the same thing God will do for each and every one of us today. Amen. And so when we think about the song that Miriam and them wrote and they sang along with Moses, the Moses song, we find that Americans, uh, Black Americans came up with a song, a national anthem for the uh, Black uh, race. It says, lift every voice and sing. Uh, it allows us to see and appreciate God and God's actions from our own personal experiences. Amen. Listen at the words that it says. Uh, uh, just pay attention to what the song, the words in the songs are saying. And it shows how that what we as a people have come through some struggles, have gone through some trials and some tribulations, some times that we did not know how we're going to make it. But yet and still, because of our faith in God, we were able to what? To stick together, trust in God, and never give up on God bringing about a change. And so that's why we sing, lift every voice and sing, amen, uh, of the goodness of God, amen. And look what it says. It says, as we close, look what it says. It says, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us, amen, keep us forever, in the path we pray. What path is that? The path of righteousness, the path of celebrating the goodness of God, the path of worshiping and praising God from our experiences that he has brought us to and not ashamed to tell others around us that we serve a true and living God, a God that's able to do anything but fail. Lift your voices and sing, amen, sing to the Lord, celebrating his goodness, his mercies, and his grace. Amen. Um, in the closing prayer, it says, Lord, we thank you for teaching us more about worship. Worship comes from the experiences God has brought us to that we acknowledge that it was God bringing us and not we ourselves. Please bless us with commitments to worship you more, both individually and cooperatively, which means you don't have to wait till you get to church among other believers to worship and praise God. You can worship God in your home. You can worship him in your car. You can worship him anywhere you are, whether you're with somebody or not. Amen. It's from your heart that you acknowledge what God has done for you that you celebrate his goodness by what? Worshiping, worshiping the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We pray something has been said today that will encourage each of us to what? To celebrate uh, the goodness of God through singing, through reading of the scriptures, to worship and praising God for who he is, what he has done, what he's doing, and what he's yet going to do. Amen. Celebrate the Lord. Thank you, Sister Jones. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Edwards. Wonderful lesson today to teach us about worshiping God. Let us repeat the mitzvah if all minds are clear. May the Lord watch between me and thee when we're absent one from another. You're dismissed. Amen. Amen.